Hey y'all, my name is Willie Lawson and I am the chief teacher, head technician, bottle washer, podcaster, host of the Saxophone Factory here on YouTube. Thank you ever so much for tuning in and thank you for those who have subscribed. And if you're not subscribed, please subscribe, hit the notification bell so you know when we post. All right, let's get to the, the crux of the video. Of course, the video is, is another basic. Um, I have students, and when I have a student who has trouble reading the notes, learning you know how to read music, because I have broken down music into three things. If you know the name of the note, and you know how to finger that note, and how long to play that note, there's, there's basically you can play anything ever been ever, that's ever been written in Western music. If you know those three things, you're good to go. So to get people of that level, you have to make sure that they understand the notation. And a lot of times we just don't understand the notation. We just don't. So I'm going to give you the way that I teach understanding the, the, the notation. Um, I'm going to try to share some screens here, so bear with me. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see here. Bear with me while I figure the technology out. There we are. Um, there is the let me clear my screen up a little bit. Am I sharing the right screen with you? I hope. Hang on a second here. I am. There it is. Um, we have what we call the treble clef. It is this big curly cue looking thing here. And, it, and we start drawing it from the inside up and down. And there you go. Now, the, le the line that we start the curly cue and surround it with is this line right here. The treble clef is often also called the G clef because the line that it encircles there, we are going to call G. Now, you won't have to worry about why it's G for now. You'll learn that eventually, but we're just going to call it G. And we're also going to learn that the musical alphabet, musical alphabet goes from A through G. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And then it starts again. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And then again, going up. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And then coming down. G, F, E, D, C, B, A. That takes a lot of concentration to say that backwards. It really does because we never say it backwards. Um, but that's, that's how it works. It's very, very simple. Bach was very, very plain about designing this the, the system. So if we are on G here, this line is G, and it is just, it's an axiom. It just is, okay? The next space starts the beginning of the musical alphabet again. And that musical alphabet at the beginning is A. Very good. And then the next line is the next letter in the musical alphabet, which is B. The next space in the musical alphabet, the next letter is C. And the next space, excuse me, the next line is D. And the next space is E. And the next line is F. And right above the line here is G. So that's from G to G. If indeed I move too fast, slow, stop the video, review what I've said, Play it again, play it a thousand times. That's the best part about this. That I don't really have to repeat myself in any more than seven times while I'm doing the video, but you get to have me repeat myself 700 times, and that's cool. I consider this an anchor way of learning where the notes are relative to each other, as opposed to some mnemonic, like every good boy does fine or, or face, F-A-C-E, where the spaces are. I'm of the mind this is a lot better system because the G is your anchor and you can move away from, you can move either up or down from there. Like, again, the musical alphabet goes from A through G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So the space below the G is the letter before G in the alphabet, which is, say it, F. Very good. And the line 
that's below the F is the letter that comes before F in the alphabet, and that's E. And the space down here is the letter that comes before E in the musical alphabet, which is D. Very good. Outstanding. Because that's how the system works. And uh, we're going to um, we're going to see if we can, I think I can do this right here. Look at some of the other letters. Not there. That one right there. There we go. Make that a little bigger so you can see it. Now, the trick is, or the goal, it's not a trick. The goal is to be able to recognize this note right away. Right away. Now, I know it has, it's, it's a different kind of note than what we looked at before. We were looking at a whole note before, and this is a quarter note. And no, it does not matter which way the stem goes up or down. It is about where the head of the note is. And the, and the blackened in part is the head of the note. That's all that matters. So if we can look at where G is real quick, we can look at this note relative to where G is. Maybe just at a glance, see that it's the next line. And in our brain go G, A, B. G, and then the A, and then the B, G, A, B. So it's a B. So we're going to memorize that middle line as B. We're going to anchor from what we know and go to what we don't know. And again, no, it does not matter if the stem is going down on the left or up on the right. It doesn't matter. The first name of that note is going to be B. It could be B flat. It could be B sharp. It could be B double sharp. It could be B double flat. Don't even worry about what that is. But those are things. Trust me, those are things. Um, but it's a B. No, that is a B something. B being the first note. Right? Cool? Cool. Let's see if we can get, get one more thing here. There we go. All right, let's look at these. These three notes before we go. We now know what where the B is. Very good. And now we also know where the G is. Which of these notes is a G? What, what's our anchor to G? Our anchor to G is the curly Q in the treble clef or the G clef. And we just looked at this note and we know it to be. So the only question is, what is the second note? Are we above or below physically the G that we know about? Always going from what we know to what we don't know. Well, the E is below. So if this is a G, and it is, this note here is a G, and it is, then we have this space here, which is right below the G, which is an F, and then the letter before F in the alphabet is? Very good. Okay, now, here's what I don't want you to do. Give me just a second, and I'll show you. I'll tell you. Here's what I don't want you to do. I do not want you to take your books or your music and start writing in the names of the notes over the notes or under the notes. That is the absolute worst way to learn the notes because you will not look at the symbols. You will always look at what you wrote. And God forbid, if you write something down wrong, you will learn it wrong and play it wrong. So it is important that you spend some time with your instrument going through these fingers. B, E, G. Recognizing them almost with your fingers and not your eyes. Because when you see th the first note and it's a B, your, your hand should auto automatically go to this finger. And the next note is an E, your hand should all automatically go to that finger. One, one, two, three, four, five. And then when you see the next note, which is a G, it should automatically go to this finger practice doing that. And if you've already written the names of the, of, the, of the notes in your music, you race them right now. Cover them with a gallon of whiteout. It is what it's the thing that's holding you back. And you're wondering, what's holding you back? That's the thing that's holding you back. Trust me. 
My name is Will Lawson, and this is the Saxophone Factory. Uh, we appreciate you being here with us today. Listen, again, if you like what we're doing here, if you like this video, if you like some of the other videos that we've done, please subscribe, tell your friends, ask questions, comment in the comments, ask questions, share the videos, hit the notification bell so you'll know when we post. And uh, we'll be back in the next video. We'll see you again. Keep playing. Bye-bye now.